<laughs> they will grow on wood. They will grow on uh, steel, rubber, glass, pretty much anything that's in the harbor at yeah. the bottom, they'll grow. It affects everyone uh, as our costs for treatment, as costs for um, different prevention methods come into play. Um, rates may increase, things could happen uh, associated with that, and so everybody needs to do their part and be understanding of what, uh, what the potential impacts are of this quagga mussel infestation. Uh, clearly the West can't wait in terms of uh, educating the public to prevent the, the westward spread of things like zebra mussels and quagga mussels and aquatic invasive species. Everything that you can do now will save you money and very significant staff time down the road. This is not an issue that is high on the radar screen of your average senator or member of the House of Representatives. But the fact is, if you're a fisherman or a boater, it needs to be high on your personal radar. Aquatic nuisance species such as zebra mussels and quagga mussels um, threaten the very existence of salmon. Just in the last five months since I've been at this location, we've gone to finding one or two uh, mussels in those filters to finding thousands. Zebra and quagga mussels are hardly the thing that people think about when they think about fishing or recreational boating. Unfortunately, these invasive species have infested the Great Lakes and much of the eastern seaboard and they're rapidly spreading west. Once they're infesting a river or water or lake system, we can't do anything really substantive to get them out of there permanently. That's why it's so important to do everything we can before they arrive to prevent them from coming to begin with. Throughout the west, we have an opportunity now, if we take action, to prevent spread of these creatures. Zebra mussel has a pronounced D shape, while the quagga mussel has a more rounded and overlapping shell edge. The difference is not important. If you find any small attached mussels in fresh water, it spells trouble and needs to be reported right away. Both of these species reach sexual maturity at about one year of age, sooner in warmer climates. A single female mussel is capable of producing up to one million eggs in a year with multiple spawnings. Fertilization is external and usually starts when water temperatures reach 52 degrees Fahrenheit. Fertilized eggs become free-floating planktonic villagers and remain in that state, being carried by water and wind currents for two to five weeks before settling. The mortality rate at this stage can be very high, often approaching 98 to 100 percent. Once settled on suitable substrate, juvenile mussels can and often do move until they find better conditions before settling in semi-permanently. The average lifespan of this mussel species is about four to five years. These mussels sustain themselves by filtering food from the water column. An adult mussel is capable of filtering up to a liter of water a day, removing nutrients that would otherwise be used by native species. Since a cause of their ability to clog water conveyances of all types, zebra and quagga mussels threaten irrigated agriculture from the point of diversion to the sprinkler head, affecting producers and consumers. I would estimate that it would be somewhere around a million dollars in capital cost to put the infrastructure and the systems in place for a long-term solution. And then there'll be the daily operation cost. We're looking at approximately a thousand dollars a day just in chlorine uh, purchase and to, to use for villager uh, control. Um, we are basically this first year is going to be close to ten million dollars that we're spending in uh, resources, chemicals and additional construction of facilities for support of chlorination facilities. We probably will be spending that same amount for the next several years just to be able to essentially defer having to do even greater expenditures down the road. The impact that zebra and quagga mussels have on the nutrient distribution and balance in a large water body is incredibly complex and frightening. When dry-seeded mussels become firmly entrenched in a system, they strip the plankton from the water, convert it to body and shell mass, and excrete what they don't use to the lake bottom. While this action does have the effect of increasing water clarity, the removal of nutrients available for bait fish and juvenile game fish completely changes the ecosystem. This action has resulted in an 80% decrease in available plankton in Lake Michigan in the last decade.
resulting in a near collapse of the whitefish fishery and a large decline in Chinook salmon numbers, growth rate, and size, as well as toxic algae blooms that have been responsible for killing tens of thousands of diving ducks. What we're seeing then is a zebra mussel population comes in, it eats the good algae, which would be food for a lot of other organisms, it releases the nutrients, which the blue-green algae can then pick up and grow, and because nobody's eating the blue-green algae, their numbers can increase dramatically. And as the zebra mussels are filtering the algae out of the water, it becomes much clearer. The light will penetrate further down to the bottom. So now we can get the growth of algae that can attach to the rocks on the bottom. And what we are starting to see in some of the Great Lakes right now is a change in the cover of the algae community in the near shore areas. People on Lake Huron have been complaining for the last few years about this blonde, slimy material that is coating the rocks along their beaches. And then when it dies, it washes in shore, decomposes, and smells horrendously. As noted earlier, when zebra or quagga mussels become established in a water body, it results in dramatic changes to the ecology by reducing the availability of nutrients that are the building blocks necessary to support recreationally and commercially important fish species. The bottom line? Reduced numbers, growth rates, and survival equals poor fishing. We have filtration systems on our recirculation systems for uh, razorback suckers and bony tail chubs, and those filters that we use um, are, are increasingly getting clogged with quagga mussels. Um, so that, that's causing more maintenance work. Um, just in the last five months since I've been at this location, we've gone to finding one or two uh, mussels in those filters to finding thousands. So it's exponentially increasing. Recreational and commercial boat and marina operators will also feel the effects from a zebra or quagga mussel infestation. The consequences of a zebra or quagga mussel invasion are devastating and far-reaching affecting every citizen in some way. All water users need to be concerned and work together with federal, state, and local lawmakers to find ways to prevent the further spread of these invaders to protect the West economy, ecology, and cultural resources. The time for action is now. Through a comprehensive program that features uh, prevention through public education, watercraft inspection, monitoring, and uh, laws and enforcement, we've been able to prevent the spread and contain the spread of aquatic invasive species in the state of Minnesota. In 1989, zebra mussels were found at our doorstep, but we only have four inland lakes now with zebra mussels. There are thousands of boaters on a daily basis within a day's drive of all the recreation boaters in the West from either Lake Mead, Lake Mojave, Lake Havasu, or some of the currently infested places on the lower Colorado River. And if you're within a day's drive of these areas, you need to be thinking about your prevention The crisis program. is now at our doorstep, and legislators, uh, decision makers, state, state and federal agencies are hearing from their constituents that, hey, what are we doing to stop this before it comes in to our waters? It, they see it's right next door and we need to move. The, the, the fact is, to be perfectly honest, this is not an issue that is high on the radar screen of your average senator or member of the House of Representatives. You need then to make this important to your representative. The way you do that is you write letters, make phone calls, or go to a town meeting. Now that may seem, most folks may not ever have done that, but I guarantee if you show up at a town meeting and you say, Congressman or Congresswoman, this is a real problem. It could cost our region hundreds of billions of dollars over a long period of time. It could ruin fishing, water supplies, agriculture. What are you personally? And what is the Congress doing to address this? You'll have an impact. But it may have a lot to do with whether you can fish in the future, whether your water rates double or triple, or whether your farms have adequate water to uh, feed the crops. Everything that you can do now will save you money and very significant staff time down the road.